so sorry for all the trouble. This, this is all we have. Well, uh, if you're sure you need it. It is good to have them back. My lord, might I have a moment of your time? I would beg of you a service. Certainly. What is it? It's a long story. But before we get to that, would I be right in thinking Lady Shula told you about the Witch from the North? Yes. She said that your ancestors found her here, and that it was she who taught them the spell to stop time. She was like Walius, you know. A dominant. The Warden of Ice. My great-grandmother suspected as much. She cared for the poor woman when the end was near. And it was she whose duty became to attend her grave. A duty that was passed down to me. I see. And the service you would beg of me? Well, until recently, the path to the grave had long been blocked by a fallen tree. But when our woodsmen finally found time to move it, we quickly realized it might have been better had they not. On trying to clear the rest of the path, you see, we discovered that a flock of bloodthirsty beasts had claimed the cliffs beyond. None of us was a match for them. But you, my lord, have proven your strength many times over. Would you drive them away for us? Of course. I'll see the path is made safe. Thank you, my lord. The grave is in a place called Witch Drop. To reach it, one must turn left at the Winged Wains, then follow the path around to the right, deep into the forest. Why so far from Haven? It was where she lived. When our ancestors first came to Mysidia, they found her there, in an old abandoned village, and it was her heartfelt wish to return there in death. So when she passed away, my great-grandmother had a stone erected for her on the cliffs overlooking the place she once called home. How thoughtful. Well then, no time like the present. Left of the ships, then round to the right, you said. Just so. Thank you once again, my lord. I will join you at the grave anon. This should be the path to Witch Drop. Hungry, Toggle.
beast. Rigging. Blacksmith that has an appetite for these things. Here's our welcoming party. Looks like that's the last of them. Now, where's the grave? This must be it. My lord. Thank you for making the path safe again. He's a... Was that her name? Yes. Hardly the most fitting tribute for a dominant, is it? A rough-hewn stone with naught but a given name engraved on it. But my ancestors had only been here a matter of weeks when she passed. Every day was a struggle to survive. They had neither the time nor the energy to devote to a more elaborate memorial. Yet they spared what they could to grant her wish, that even in death she might continue to watch over her home. She lived down there then, in the ruins. That's right. They were once the living quarters for those who served up in the temple. When the Northern Thanes sent her here to weave her spell, this was where she and her retinue stayed. There were priests, handmaidens, and a knight sworn to shield her from harm. 
Of course, they were all gone by the time my ancestors arrived. Fled or dead in the Western Wars. All except his A. Who remained till the end. Alone. Indeed. At least, that is the story as it's been handed down in Haven. But there is an epilogue to the tale. One known only to Lady Shula and myself. Some years after Issei's passing, you see, my grandmother came here to tend the grave and found a stranger kneeling before it. A knight, dressed head to toe in plate. She asked of him who he was and whence he had come, but received no answer. The only words he spoke were, tell me true, whose grave is this? So she told him of how her people had met and cared for Issei, and how she had died. His only reaction was to stare up at the air of hours in silence. Then he left, never to be seen again. You said he was wearing plate. Was it black and gold? Do you know something of him? When we went up to the Air of Hours to unravel the spell, we were set upon by a shade in the shape of a knight in full plate. It manifested in front of the Vare, and in its ether, I felt Shiva, the witch. You think this may have been the same man my great-grandmother met? He says knight. I don't know. Maybe. All I can say for sure is it was intent on protecting her creation. Or perhaps her spirit. What remained of her ether, preserved in the Vare. Perhaps his spirit too became enraveled in her spell. Frozen in an eternal vigil. Till we ended it. If the shade you fought was Issei's knight, then ending it was the greatest gift you could have given him. Now he can return to the sea, to be with his lady once more. And if his spirit should ever return here to visit her grave, I shall ask his name, that I might carve it in the stone next to hers. That they might be together, once and for all. It's good to have him back. You wouldn't happen to have some time on your hands, would you, Clive? Only I was wondering if you might help me with something else. Don't tell me. Another unruly dominant. Not quite, but a dangerous foe nonetheless. It promises to be quite a hunt. Care to join me? All right. Tell me about our quarry. A fiendish, cold-blooded beast known as a Givra. Normally, we leave such animals well alone, and for good reason. But I have an even better reason to want its tongue. Uh, its tongue? If you'll permit me, tributary, I can explain. Certainly, Yamila. It's been over a week since my sister gave birth to her first child, yet she still isn't back on her feet. 
We've tried everything to restore her spirits. Physics and nostrums, the laying on of hands and of leeches, but all to no avail. The healers tell me there's only one hope left. A broth as potent as its ingredients are perilous to procure. It isn't only Yamila's sister who stands to benefit from this, by the way. There's her baby to think of, and Walias, too. She'd agreed to be his wet nurse, you see. I'd be glad to help. Thank you. Our hunters have no shortage of skill, but this task calls for more than that. And it won't be achieved through weight of numbers, either. The Giver is as wary a foe as it is a deadly one. Two hunters might catch it unawares, but any more than that, and it would pick up our scent a league away. Then it is decided. The two of you will go, while Jill and I occupy ourselves here. Perhaps we might help prepare the broth. That would be most kind of you. Come then, Clive. The river of time flows fast, and so must we. There's a Gavra that has claimed the ruins at the foot of the mountain as its hunting ground. But as I say, they are wary creatures. We'll need suitable bait to draw it out. The flesh of a forest ibex should suffice. To the forest, then. There's nothing a Gavra loves more than a fat haunch of ibex. There speaks the voice of experience. Do you hunt often? Since I was a girl, my father would take me. Then after he returned to the sea, Yamila's father. Our families have always been close. Even if her sister wasn't Walius's wet nurse, I couldn't stand by and watch her suffer. Find them. Further in. Return to the sea, and to the clouds rise again. We have our bait then. What next? Next, we pay a visit to the dark gate to pick some local weed. It'll help disguise our scent. There should be a sprig or two of local weed growing somewhere around here. Look for the golden leaves. Is this it? Aye, that's the stuff. 
crush the leaves between your fingertips and rub them on your clothes. Uh, if you insist. You could have warned me about the smell. Like corruption, isn't it? We'll have an honor guard of flies before long. But it'll stop the Gavra from noticing us. Its nose will tell it we're nothing but a feast for worms. Oh, I feel so much better. We can wash it off afterwards. If there's one good thing about the Gavra choosing the ruins for its hunting ground, it's that there's plenty of fresh water nearby. Should we lay the bait? Gavers are creatures of habit. Look for some sign of its passing. It's sure to return to the same place sooner or later. Marking his territory. Something was. A curl, maybe. Too small to belong to a Givra. You're right. They're barely big enough to belong to a Givra's breakfast. Givrus. The wounds are too clean, too small. his tracks. He can clearly make out the claws. But not just any claws. These belong to a Givra. There's no mistaking them. We'll lay the bait here. Let's hope our friend is hungry. Clive. Hunting's not something you can rush. Have you stalked these beasts before? Once. Gavras are fast, so the job called for a bearer. But even with my knack, it was a close-run thing. Not many leaders would take such risks for their people. Says the man who battled an icon to save a boy he barely knew. It is the way of the moats of water to use what gifts we've been given for the good of all. 
And I gather it's your way too. It was Sid, the man whose name I bear. He fought for his people and their future with every fiber of his being. And I'm just following in his footsteps. In many ways, you remind me of him. Me? You're confusing daring with desperation. Quiet. Something's coming. Our guest has finally arrived. Shall we greet him? It'd be rude not to. exaggerating when you said they were dangerous. They're forces of nature, all right. And with this one's passing, the river of life has calmed. O oh, roaring torrent, son of storms, may your spirit run free in the open ocean. This flesh I claim, that your gifts might rain down upon us this day, and our river flow in spate once more. Well then, let's return to the village. We must get this tongue to your miller before it spoils.
tributary. My lord. Did all proceed as planned? It did. Here. Yeah. One giver tongue, as promised. Oh, thank you. I shall add it to the broth at once. By your leave, tributary. If there is anything else that we can do to help, you need only ask. No, no. You've already done more for my family than I can ever repay. Just as you have, Clive, for my family. I only regret that I have nothing to offer you in return but my gratitude. It's more than enough. Besides, I'm no less grateful to you. For what? For welcoming my friends and I into your midst. For showing us how your people live. For reminding me that the world we strive to create, where bearers can live alongside their fellow men in peace and comfort, is no mere fantasy. I'd hardly call it comfort. Every day is a struggle. Though we do at least struggle together, it's true. As must we all. I only ask that you remember the cost of using your gifts as a bearer. I know that you feel it's your duty to do whatever you can to help your people. But you have a child to think about now. And Wallace has lost enough. I shall bear that in mind. That's all I ask. Oh, and if there is anything else that we can do to help, well, you know. Thank you. Truly. <laughs>